18 months on from conquering Europe, Manchester United entered the 70s in transition. Jock Steen had been approached to succeed Sir Matt Busby on his retirement, but when he declined, Busby decided to take Wilf McGuinness under his management wing. It cast a big shadow. It's rather a big thing to get, first of all, into a uh, team manager at Manchester United, but from one of the staff. He's a boy that uh, has the potential, but uh, as I've said before, everybody starts at coach and then a chief coach become team manager, and I think this is probably the best thing for Wilf at the present time. Do you think he's given you enough authority in this uh, position as chief coach to get you by at Old Trafford? Yes, I think so. I think um, it'll be something I'll be able to... Uh, get my teeth into with the help of the staff here. Obviously he was the general manager so he, he, he was there and, and that possibly turned out to be difficult from my point of view if I was picking the team leaving players out or wanting new players I had to go uh, through him for, for new players and he dealt with the directors you know so there was grey areas where I wasn't sure how much uh, was my involvement and how much was it but uh, in in uh, in the end, being 31 was a handicap. It, it would have been better if he'd have stayed on from my point of view and took me on as his number two and then possibly uh, uh, developed and learnt more that way. In Will's first season, United did reach two semi-finals. Manchester City beat them in the League Cup. The team was still the one that Matt built. Best with this perfect balance. Oh, it's an indirect free kick, so it'll have to be teed up. Obstruction. Oh, no, he's not going to have a shot at goal. Oh, it's a goal by Sotheby. Eight minutes from the end. Sotheby has scored. Only three new players have been bought in six years. Stepney, Yore and Morgan. Local honour was repaired en route to the semi-finals of the FA Cup. City were United's fourth round victims. Charlton! Yes! Bobby Charlton brought down. And there it is! Flag was up. Kid! Yes, it's been allowed, although the linesman's flag was up. I think it was up, in fact, because he was being pulled back by Booth. Lee. Nobody at all in this half of the field. And Brian Kidd is after it. He's there first. Book has got to come to cover. Oaks is in pursuit. It's in! What a goal! I don't think any goal is easy to take, but there was a greater deal of looking my second goal because it bobbled a little bit, you know, it helped me to flick it over Ken Mullen's head, which I was grateful for. Cup, that's a saying, luck wins the cup, so let's hope it's in our favour. Everything was in United's favour in round five. George Bess was back from suspension, as fourth division Northampton were about to find out. Baron forward for Kidd. In the middle is Morgan and Best. Book could lose it, it's Best! Georgie Best! Well, what a comeback! What a way to come back into big time football! Georgie Best, one nothing. Good jump then by Dave Sadler. Fair and through for Best! Here he goes again! Georgie Best! What a beautiful bit of running by this man! Charlton feeding Kidd. Best free in the middle. Willie Morgan coming over to help Kidd now. And a chance for Best. Here's the hat trick. There it is eventually. Well, well, well. Georgie Best makes it a hat trick. But that third one is the easiest he'll ever score. Brian Kidd. Saver then was Brooks. Kidd again. His best. Number four. Georgie Best. Just the tiniest touch. 
Touch for Kidd. Brian Kidd. There's the substitute, Burns. Right in action right away. Best going through the middle. He's on for five. There it is. Oh, Georgie Best. What a difference this man makes to any front line. There's George Best. Two Burns. Has Kidd forward on the far side of two unmarked men. One of them is Willie Morgan, who should get another goal here. No, Kidd does. Kidd, who's twice been down with an injury. Here's Crerand. Best. Here's the record. There it is. Georgie Best sets a new scoring record for Manchester United. Six goals in a game. And George Best has already taken up his position on the very far side of the field there, and he's first away down the tunnel too. He wasn't going to wait. Already down there, behind those policemen, George Best, the hero of this game, has gone. George Best, six goals. Best was still only 23. The 70s were a decade that could have been his and his alone. Although Middlesbrough were dispatched from the quarter-finals, Leeds edged United in a twice-replayed semi. Eighth was as high as United would finish for another six years. George Best sold two dummies and now has made a chance for himself. His hat trick! While Best was still in full bloom, some of the other 60s icons were starting to show their age. McGuinness was from the same generation, but not quite the same vintage. He didn't carry the clout to be able to make the necessary changes. Looking back, there was players that we could have bought. People like Malcolm McDonnell was available from Luton, I feel we should have got him. Colin Todd from Sunderland, who I'd worked with the, with the youth under 23s and uh, Mick Mill was really, I didn't inquire about all of them but it was felt just wait a bit and see what happened but we didn't get them I think it would have made my job easier and uh, looking back if there was things I would have changed that would have been one of them to, to get players like that in and help Bobby Charlton, Dennis Law and certainly George Best would have thrived on it I think Best to Charlton, what a good ball by Best to chase it, still Kidd, and there's the second one, from Brian Kidd. Comes through to Kidd, and he's got Law in the middle. Kidd with a shot, oh, and there's the post of Law. Law will put it in. A good cross there by Aston, and a jackknife header again by uh, Brian Kidd. Bobby Charlton on the left foot, a deflection, and a goal. Kidd. Styles to Sartori. Aitken getting in each other's way. Oh, a magnificent goal. And the first real error in that bit of defence. And my goodness, how it's been punished. Kid. Oh, brilliant bit of work by Kid. It's a goal, a great goal. Bradley. Lockhead to Anderson. 
We did have some near successes. We, we played seven semi-final games in an 18-month spell. You know, that's not bad. Do you think if you'd gone on and got to a final and maybe won it, it might have turned out differently? Oh yeah, I'd still be here and Alex Ferguson had never got near the place. <laughs> no, who knows what would have happened. There was still a mountain to climb, as uh, people found out. At the end of 1970, Wilf McGuinness was returned to his duties with the United Reserves, unqualified, unable to come between Busby and his team. He was very immature, um, and for want of a better word, childish. I think it culminated once with him making Bobby do press-ups in the mud one day with his suit on, and Wilf decided that he wanted to have a team meeting in the middle of the, the mud, and it was raining down at the cliff. So he went, sent for Bobby and made him come back out. Bob, of course, had changed and got his suit on, collar and tie, ready to go. And we had this daft rule, if you got caught with your hands in your pockets, you had to do ten press-ups. And that's how it all started. McGuinness did win one trophy, the Daily Express National Indoor Five-a-Side competition. One as you'd expect, in style. Best! 1-1, one, one. it's going in! And Best has done it again! Fitzpatrick. Trying to work a position. Best. Four minutes to go. One each. He's got it. What a goal! George Best threaded his way through. Look at that and look at the finish. No wonder George Best is priceless. It wasn't what United were used to. The boat was rocking. It was time for the captain to return to the bridge. Busby had tried retirement, but it didn't suit him or the club. Not until a worthy successor could be found. The club and the board of directors are determined, probably in their own minds, that it should be a figure, it should be a man that's got experience, it should be a man that's handled players in the situation. That doesn't necessarily mean uh, first class. There's some great managers in the second division. I, I could tell you one or two myself. But, and you can uh, name me one too. Uh, yeah, I think this Frank O'Farrell is a very, very promising manager. Frank O'Farrell, it's July the 1st, it's a bright sunny day in Manchester. What are your feelings as you take over this job? I feel optimistic, although in recent seasons the club hasn't had the success it had before that. I feel that inevitably this club will again win honours. How soon I can't say at the present time, obviously. George Best, who scored directly from a corner last week. In swinger. players are losing this ball in the sun but it was best who picked up that kid flick driven wide yes Gowling and kid he's not offside but there's very little help yet Gowling's just arrived Kid on the left. The long cross, although McElroy now moving to the near post. Best! Sammy McElroy. Morgan. If he can put it back, he's got best. And McElroy! Sammy McElroy, the scorer. Alton. Best! George Best made it look so easy doing a double shuffle that Muhammad Ali would have been very proud of. Kid on the far 
far post. Best near in. And steady made it. Alan Dowling moving up this side as we look. Charlton's backflip. Kids. Best to take it. Four men in the box. Law, Charlton, Kidd and Gowdy. And it's in! Kidd. Law, Best and Kidd following up. Three. Kid. And we were at the top of the league, and then when we lost a couple of games, all of a sudden, the secret Frank Afaro came out, <laughs> the coaching manual suddenly appeared, and the blackboard, and it just all changed. I don't think we ever lost a game on the, on the blackboard. I think we drew a couple, but I don't think we ever lost any. He spent, oh, months with me asking me to head a ball and I kept saying to him well Frank I'm crossing the ball how can I cross it and head it at the same time we couldn't understand that the title challenge Frank O'Farrell so carefully constructed for Christmas came crashing down with the decorations the league standings were telling a meandering tale of mid-table mediocrity but there was never a dull moment at Manchester United George Best saw to that. Hand-reared by Busby, his talent and flair were handmade to suit United's image. But his image was increasingly that of the wayward genius. Everyone wanted a piece of football's first superstar, and George wanted a piece of everything that was put in front of him. It was all too much for O'Farrell to understand. Very often I was criticised for not slinging him out of the club, but a manager's duty is to pick what he considers are his best 11 players, and George Best for a long time while I was there was my best player. The pressing priority was to waterproof a leaking defence. Martin Buchan was bought to make a start on the job. But the other main acquisitions were not defenders, but more forwards. Wynne Davis, Ted McDougall, and first Ian Storey Moore, whose promising United career was blighted by injury. Moore keeps up his goal a game average for Manchester United. McDougall, appeal for hands not given. Davis! And the goal goes to Wynne Davis, but the credit goes to Ted McDougall. O'Neill on a run. There was no quick fix, though. Midway through his second season, and O'Farrell's team had slipped into relegation trouble. Defeat by fellow strugglers Crystal Palace was the final straw. Live coming in for Palace. And this has been their greatest afternoon. And there's Rogers. Will this be five? It's going to be five. It is five. Christmas 71, top of the table. Christmas 72, almost bottom of the table. Like Wolf McGuinness before him, Franco Farrell had lasted just 18 months. Bob, is this a tremendous load off your mind? I think so. Uh, well, not just for me, but for the rest of the players. I mean, obviously, over the past few months, things haven't been right here. As far, no, not, if for nothing else, they're just the results, you know, and uh, I think the players would welcome the chance to start from scratch. The players have the ear of directors and uh, they, they get together and uh, very often this, uh, things are discussed which shouldn't be discussed between players and directors and very often the manager is the fall guy, he's the man in the middle and uh, he's the one that gets hurt eventually through it. United needed a tonic, they sent for the Doc. Tommy Doherty wanted to be manager of Manchester United so much he gave up the Scotland job on the verge of World Cup qualification. He almost made a winning start too. Making his presence felt out here on the right. McDougall! That's what Tommy Duggery wanted, and that's what the crowd wanted. Jack 
Charlton is up. One by Wynne Davis. Maidley. The flag is down. Here's Clark. And he scores! Alan Clark grabbing the equaliser right on full time. Well, it was in a terrible state, actually. I mean, I mean you, you didn't really realise the condition the club was in, actually. It needed about 16 players, not, not half a dozen. Uh, and there was players just going through the motions at the time. They weren't interested in how they played. They were only interested in how long they played. And I felt sorry for Wolf McGuinness and uh, Frank McFarrell before me because they had no chance. They were trying to do what I was trying to do. And I felt if I hadn't got rid of some of them, they'd have got rid of me. I brought Ali Forsyth in from the national team, the right fullback. Uh, we got big Jim Holton uh, at the heart of the defence from, from Shrewsbury as well for 80,000 quid. Buckingham was already here, who I had already recommended to, to Frank Cafaro. And uh, we later on, we got Stuart Houston, who I had as a kid at Chelsea. I think the most I spent was uh, Lou McCarry, uh, 200,000 quid, which today is peanuts today. Yes, McCarry! McCarry sets Old Trafford alight! Players are brought to clubs when the club's struggling, and I came along with a, a load of other players, and, and everything changed around so quickly. And then I mean, all of a sudden George had gone, Bobby had gone, Dennis had gone, and a whole new batch of players had come in. Uh, and it took us, to, you know, it took time for us to get to know one another. It took time for us to get to be able to play on the pitch. The first gentleman of football makes his last appearance in the Football League. Bobby Charlton coming out to mark this momentous occasion. After 17 years of unparalleled and unblemished service to club and country, Bobby Charlton was retiring. George Bess was talking about it. I mean, it became a nightmare. So, I took the easy choice. I disappeared. George hadn't quite given up the game, but announced that beach football in Marbella was where his career was now heading. It was the beginning of the end for the third member of the Holy Trinity of the swinging 60s too. Dennis Law had already scored his last league goal for United before Doherty arrived. The two soon parted company. I just felt, uh, you know, Dennis was past uh, his best, actually. And I'm not being disrespectful when I say that. He was, I mean, world-class player. He was a £20 million player today. Doherty and his cavalry managed to avoid the drop. But things were to get worse before they got better. it up for Young. Good shot! And Tony Young gets his first ever goal for Manchester United. It's Coyne! And the first for the first team, having scored so many for the junior sides. Morgan. More out left, good shot. And a good one! Kid hanging back behind the attack. There he is, number eight. Three on the edge of the area. There's the gap for kids. Being told to go in by George Graham. The, the Spanish summer was over and George Bess was persuaded to return. A little weightier, but apparently no hungrier. He was to play just 12 more games with Manchester United before their wild romance ended forever. Best chance for the shots. And it was flicked home by Kidd. Greenock. Nice dummy and shot, yes! So Martin Pat and felt that George could do as a turn, which I did as well because we weren't blessed with great players at the time. I felt that if he'd have come back and did the business for us uh, the way he, we thought he could do, uh, he'd have been a great asset to us. But uh, he, he couldn't do it. Then the crowning blow was a cup tie with Plymouth for Gal. around the back this time that's a good ball Graham was there and it was Macari little Lou Macari has scored with a header 
best didn't play in the game. There are two sides to the story as to exactly why he didn't, but no disputing that this was the final break. A 27, probably the most gifted footballer Old Trafford ever saw, left in a suitably fast car, leaving the team to another relegation fight. Only this time, there was to be no escape. Is there more hope than belief in the fact that United can escape relegation? Um, I think it could be 50-50, but um, you know, from from the staff really, I suppose. But but the, I still think we'll, we'll stay out. I've got to think that way. If I if I turn, you know, if I turn around and say, well, no, I've got no chance. What's he using me playing? How many points are you going to need from those 10 games? I reckon at least 15, 16 points. And this team is capable of it? You can guess is it? Well, uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think we're capable of it, yeah, yeah. But you still smile? I still smile, yeah. <laughs> Greenoff does well, but it's Macalio punching it forward. And Macari has got the turn of the screen and a chance to score here. With effort, it's there. A great goal by Macari. And Greenoff is not offside. He's got a chance here of making it two for United. Well taken. A run of 10 points out of 12 gave United hope of survival. But it was just a stay of execution. The lawman signed the warrant. Pulled across for law! Dennis has done it! And no elation there at all from Dennis Law. We've got an invasion of the pitch that we could well do without. And I suspect that uh, we shall see the referee calling the players off. Yes, he's taking them off. We have, in fact, had 45 minutes in this game, and I don't see him bringing them back on. So that, presumably, is the end of the game. And apart from 45, 90 minutes at Stoke on Monday, the end of Manchester United's 36 years unbroken run in the first division. Sent there by the last kick that Dennis Law is likely to take on this field. No, let's get it right. No, they didn't go down because they got beat by Manchester City that day. They went down because Birmingham beat Norwich uh, the same day. So don't give me that. I never put them down. Dennis was right. United went down by five points. But the final irony was irresistible. The good old days were over. I feel very, very certain. I've never been as certain of anything in my life. This club will return next year to where I should never have left. It's the first division. Aggravation, aggravation, <laughs> la 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 la. Relegation was one thing, but further disgrace was about to be heaped upon the name of the club. The hooligans, I reckon the hooligans these fellas are today. They enjoy the football, they enjoy the trouble as well. English football was in the grip of its hooligan period, and the Red Army's reputation for trouble went before them. I always to think bring the birds back and, uh, and uh, get suspicion back again into the army when they leave school. Each 
arrest, each eviction attracted more attention, more notoriety, more arrests, more evictions, more police, more sanctions, more headaches for a club with enough to be going on with. There'll be more trouble because they can't get in than if they lose. The talking. Every crowd has its bad feud on it. There was loyalty being shown in the boardroom too. Samat and his chairman, Louis Edwards, agreed to give Doherty more than the 18 months his predecessors had been allowed, and more money too for a new centre forward. Martin, Pearson. They gave uh, Tommy Doherty a chance to get rid of some of the deadwood at uh, the club, brought some new players, uh, got the players into the habit of winning. I think the support increased because we were winning. And uh, it was never as easy a season as Lou McGarry used to say. And after about five games, when we would bang down four or five goals in each game, and we'd hit two or three teams here for four, we the penny dropped with us all that uh, it was going to be almost a formality to get out of the division. We played exciting attacking football because the public at Old Trafford demanded that, and that's what they got home and away. Hoagley, that'll fall for Brian Greenoff. And look at Morgan in so much space now. Willie Morgan for Manchester United. And that's a beautiful goal. That is a beautiful goal. Bucken and Posse are the only men, other than Alex Stepney, who have stayed back. So that really is a crowded Orient penalty area. As Forsyth chips it into the far side towards Houston. Oh, and what a header! And it's there by Houston. 2 0. Forsyth, Gary, and Needham. Daly must be Makarov. McCalliog and on again for McElroy. Good early cross. This away was deflected. And the one from Pearson. Pearson. Well kept in. Just Makari in the middle. Greenoff going into. Makari's header, Pearson, number three! Touched out for McElroy. Four hungry forwards waiting in the area for a cross. McElroy goes for the shot, Pearson! He's had to 57,000 every game. Uh, there were maybe five or six thousand out for some games, so the, f the fans were absolutely tremendous. And I was lucky enough to score a few goals early doors, and then th they got right behind me, and, and then I became a bit of a hero to the fans, and, and I've always loved them ever since. Okay. Oh, good ball to Pearson, he waited his moment. Still Pearson. Superbly struck! Pearson. He's done well, done very well indeed. Morgan the scorer. Jerry Daly, McElroy. Mr Edmonds got dressed so well, he, he was just drinking champagne and smoking cigars and you know, people saying to him, what a great side you've got, what, how good it is to watch, and even some Matt. Loved it as well because the team played the way his teams played. What a superb goal by Willie Morgan! That was real class. By way of a diversion from the main business of the day, United reached the last four of the League Cup, losing to second division rivals Norwich City. But Wembley would wait. Promotion as champions was achieved. Tommy Doherty had kept his promise. United had made an immediate return to the big time. McElroy. Beautifully done. Great play by Sammy McElroy. Along the line, Pearson. And it is I thought the football uh, was played that season was magnificent. Uh, we played with two wide men. We played attack and football. Every away ground was full. 
broken records and everything and well it was a good job because when we got relegated it was devastation but when we came back it started to me the rebirth of United again. Moving backwards and forwards and coming in on it. Topple and Pearson scores. is there for the return, McCurry going on, and it's turned in by McElroy. Curry, good ball play for the side of the foot. Oh, Brown lost it, and Pearson says thanks very much. Just look at them. Here's Daly. And that's the world proved to be the killer. Daly. McElroy. Still McElroy. And that's five. McElroy. Coppell. Oh, he's round his man. Good low ball, yes! Bakari. What a trophy! Oh, it's a goal! He's done it again, this man, McElroy! Last attempt for Manchester United, I guess. Number three, Stuart Houston going forward. Nine is Pearson, four, Jerry Daly. Eleven just outside is Hill and over comes the corner. And it's come out to Hill. Yes! Gordon Hill, that's his first home goal. United fans were enjoying the thrill ride. It was edge-of-the-seats football provided by two edge-of-the-field footballers. On the left wing, the chirpy cockney, Gordon Hill. On the right, the studio scouser, Steve Koppel. They came at you from all sides. Gordon Hill on the left, Stevie Koppel on the right. The way we used to get the service, which was really important to us, it helped us. I mean, we had full-backs in the team that could pass it, Martin Buchan at the back with, with Jim Holt and O'Brien Greenoff. We had an engine in midfield, Sammy Mack and, and Louis, that could get there and help you. And we had to hold the ball up, and, but, but everybody gelled. Every, every department was, was super. Doherty almost won the championship, but a glittering consolation prize was beckoning. United were through to an FA Cup semi-final against Derby County at Hillsborough. The moment of release from the tensions that have been building up for the past half an hour and more. The expression will tell their own story of the feelings of tension. The greeting from the Manchester United supporters to their team. Massive flags and some very original banners. Hill, nicely played to Daly. The query is up. Hill, trying to count it and does! Jordan Hill! And that confident, cocky youngster from London's Millwall has put Manchester United in front. Contrast between the two ends of the ground. Total noise from behind Graham Moses' goal. And Hill, it was deflected. And that surely ties it up. Gordon Hill's second goal. And all around the ground now, all you can see is red and white of Manchester United. And there's the happiest Londoner that ever went to Manchester. Bobby Stokes, hit well, oh he's there, Stokes has put Southampton in the lead, and they're all off that Southampton bench, the underdogs have confounded them all. Well, I'll never forget it, yeah, that was offside, 
to this day it was offside but the records show Southampton won Man United nothing I was more disappointed after that game than the world when we got relegated because I was so sure we were going to beat Southampton crosses the go by Pearson. That's a lovely goal. And it's in by Lubakay. Gets cross. O'Neill. Best. And McElroy. Maddox. And another fantastic save. Duncan. Bailey, Nickel, Hill, yes, oh what a cracking goal, first time left peg, woof, no chance at all for Zop. Back in Europe for the first time since 1969, United put out Ajax and beat Juventus at Old Trafford. But in Turin, they met their match against the core of the Italian World Cup winning team. It was a Juventus side that was to go on and lift the UEFA Cup. The players I did try to sign, deals tied up, was uh, Peter Shelton, the goalkeeper from Stoke City. Man United wouldn't pay him £400 a week wages at the time. Jimmy Greenough, who, who we got as well. Uh, Jimmy came here for £50 a week less than he was getting at Stoke City because we wouldn't pay him the same wages he was getting at Stoke City. People don't believe that when they tell you, but that is a fact. They were always here, very careful. Not saying stingy, very, very careful with the money. Luckily, Doherty had an eye for a bargain. He had a passion for buying forwards in particular. He had an eye for Wembley again too. His adventurous team seemed somehow made for the cut and thrust of FA Cup football. <laughs> Good positive run. Green up up ahead. Hill wide. Got the luck with the bounce. Here's Green up. Pearson at the back of the box. McElroy and turned in by McCurry. Pearson coming across, McCurry got the back flick and Jimmy Greenall scores! McCurry, Pearson, Greenall and it was deflected and it's in! McCurry shifting the position of the ball slightly, so the wall is shifted as well. Driven by Houston! Delight now for the United manager. Stuart Houston, the scorer from the free kick. The players must sense it because the crowd certainly do. This could be United's moment. Pearson. McCarthy! Houston going forward in the number three shirt. Taking near post. Hill taking the corner. Out they come, a good header by Houston. And it's in by Jimmy Greenoff. And the mistake was Frank Graves. Hill, and that'll hang. Good header by Pearson. Hill, blocked by Hampton. Cobble! going through Tommy Doherty's mind he came here four times with Scotland as a player lost three and drew one he came here as a player in the cup final with Preston in 54 and lost and this is his third FA Cup final as a manager there's Jimmy Greenock's header on for Pearson a chance on here and Pearson is the scorer 
I remember running to the fans and sticking my arm up and, and, and all the lads jumping on my back. I mean, it's the greatest feeling you can ever feel in your career. That's why I never played the rest of the game. My back was killing me. <laughs> Jones. Pace. Good turn. Macari. Smith slips slightly. Jimmy Green off. And is it got in by Macari? Is it? Coming off the pitch, if someone had said to me, do you know that ball that Jimmy Green off on the chest or on the shoulder? Uh, I, I'd have called them liars because I, I didn't see it and I don't remember it. And it was only after the game when it was shown to me on television was the, f the first and only indication I had that that ball deflected off Jimmy and into the back of the net. Would it have gone in? There's a, there's a train station behind that end at Wembley called Wembley Central. It would probably have landed on platform two. <laughs> Twelve months after losing here, Tommy Doherty, the manager who one or two people rather cruelly said was the most successful failure in football, has today proved them wrong. When I put a lid in my head, Big Jack Charlton, a lovely block, Big Jack. Uh, he, he said before the game, when we played Southampton, that I hadn't done my homework properly on Southampton. And I was pointing up to you, Big Jack, I said, not bad for a fella who's not done his homework. We promised you last year we would bring the cup back. And, and we brought the, the cup back to the finest supporters in the world. He had them eating them out of their hand, the supporters loved them. He, he, he was Manchester United at the time and everyone was looking forward after winning the cup to next season for a good league. But the love affair between Doherty and United was ended by the manager's love for the wife of physiotherapist Laurie Brown. When it became public, the club felt duty bound to intervene in their manager's private life. I went to the chairman's house, the old village, and uh, so Matt was back from Holland then. And uh, they asked me, you know, they couldn't have that sort of thing at the club. They asked me to, to resign, which I refused to do. And then second, It is the board's intention to appoint a new manager as soon as possible, and applications are invited from managers with experience and proven ability, which should be addressed to the chairman, Mr Louis C. Edwards, at the club address in confidence. Dave Sexton was revealed as the man to succeed Doherty, just as he had done at Chelsea and Queen's Park Rangers. Talk about chalk and cheese. Probably the nicest man I've met in football. The problem Dave had was that when Doc gave a, a press conference, the press would have to figure out what to leave out. When Dave uh, had a meeting with the press, the press didn't know what to put in because he gave him uh, so little. But he was just a different character. What is the type of Dave Sexton Manchester United team we'll see? Well, I think very much the same as, uh, as has been the last two or three years. They've made a great name for themselves you know, for attacking football and with the type of players that they've got, um, that is obviously their strength. First corner of the game. Uh, Koppel is there, but I think uh, Hill is now fit enough to take it himself. No, Koppel takes it. It's a good one in, and it's a goal. Lubakari. Lubakari, 1-0 Manchester United. United unchanged from most of the back end of last season. Flying with great teamwork. That's up by Macari. Hill trying to get there. Macari! Goal! Lou Macari, second goal of the game. 2 0 Manchester United. And here's Hill. And that's not close at all. That is right back on the target. Gordon Hill. To Curler. McElroy up. McCreary. And. Lou Macari gets his hat trick. No. Yes. Pearson. McCreary in the middle. Hill! And that one was going to count. And the crowd has gone completely silent except for the Manchester United supporters. Following crowd disturbances in San Etienne, UEFA decided to throw United out of the competition. On appeal, the second leg was played and won at neutral Plymouth. But in round two, United took a 4-0 hiding in Porto. Surely this time there would be no reprieve. With a bad kick, here's McGrath. Pearson, his couple. Yes! Just Oliveira in the middle at the moment for Porto. Still Sonino. 
Shooting chance, and it's gone in. Hill, Pearson and Koppel in the centre with McElroy. Koppel got in, it's off the defender, and goal. Seemed to go in off the defender. Mursar. Punched out. Nickel! And got a flick on and it's got in Koppel got there Anderson oh he's not offside and Sonino steals it again and could square it up completely for Porto this could settle it and it's gone in it's all over Porto will go through now Hill looking for Pearson who may make it here and he has has he Heartbreaks came thick and fast. When West Brom beat United in the fourth round of the FA Cup, their season was effectively over. It was Sexton's turn to spend, and spend big. Big money, big players, quite literally. Joe Jordan was signed from Leeds and was soon joined by Gordon McQueen. Cobalt offered £850,000. I know there's not a great deal to go for this. Season. There's only Europe and we've got it all on for that, but at the start of next season we hope we'll go places then. And now Keith! And he's got it! Cup ball! What a miss! Daly! Final shot, and it's a goal! David Meek, who was the Manchester Evening News reporter, he used to ask me every season, you know, what do you think this season? And I used to say, well, maybe the cup, but we're not going to win the league. I just felt we didn't have the, the right ammunition in, in the squad to go and win the league. Hell! Brilliant, he's back! Adjustments. Gordon Hill was sold to Tommy Doherty at Derby and replaced by Wrexham's Welsh international, Mickey Thomas. There was to be a change in goal too, where Paddy Roach was finding Alex Stepney a hard act to follow. 20-year-old Gary Bailey looked a natural. And what a save by Bailey! Headlines the following day off my debut, Gary Glitters. They have made it. Two days later we got beat 3-0 at Everton, Gary Jitters, and I thought, hello. And that, that, was the, you know, that was the pressure we were under for the rest of the career. It was always every game, every game, you've got to perform. Man United, under the spotlight, only the best expected. And a lot of pressure. Losing a League Cup tie to 3rd Division Watford did little to ease that pressure. It was the FA Cup or bust. Gordon McQueen moving into the area. And it's not in at the far post by Joe Jordan. Thomas, oh, there's some space here. Mayda coming to cut it down. Oh! Liverpool lay in wait in a semi-final that went to a second match after Alan Hansen had equalised inside the final ten minutes at Main Road. With Arsenal waiting at the Wembley gates, Goodison Park stays the replay. It was a stage on which Jimmy Greenoff was to hog the spotlight. Thomas, McElroy is just inside, Greenoff is far post, Jimmy Greenoff! Manchester United have scored and it's the man that got the winner in the final! Jimmy Greenoff! Would you believe it? Made possible by Mickey Thomas, who saw Greenoff on the far post, and Greenoff heads it past Clements. Two nothing down. And hope now is fast fading for them as Koppel lifts that free kick in there again. It'll come all the way through to Jordan, turning it back in there again. And go! And it's good. Is the man who claims it and 
suddenly United are back in the game with four minutes left and who knows what might be produced in those four minutes but here's Koppel and there's McElroy getting in there can he finish it off yes he can two goals in a minute and suddenly United are back in it Arsenal were preparing their victory speeches and now they're dumbstruck I actually thought and, and seen Arsenal faces. If that game had went in the extra time, I know it's all ifs and buts, but if it had went in the extra time, they were dead. Uh, because when we got at the 2-2, when I happened to score the equaliser, they were on their knees. And, well, you know what happened after that. What an amazing turnabout. And the scenes on the two benches, well, I've never heard. The despair on the face of Don Howe and uh, Terry Neal. But wait a moment, it's there by Sunderland, and they're back in the lead again, and they're off the bench once more. What an amazing cup final. Gary was a good goalkeeper, obviously, and um, ah, he maybe, yeah, he made a mess of it. <laughs> Not letting him away with that one. Defeat in the five-minute final was hard to swallow but Sexton was convinced that everything was now in place to challenge for the star prizes again and again. The championship was back on the agenda. Jimmy Nicol. Gary, a dummy. Oh, well done. Here's Nicol again. And there's the goal from Gordon McQueen. Jordan. A couple. Getting to the line again, but he's so dangerous. There's the cross, and there's the goal. What a beauty. Little guy. That's McCarty getting the ball out to Jordan. And stabs it in. And it's a goal. Joe Jordan. 1-0 Manchester United. 1-15 into the game. Justifying their second place in the table. Some side this. Cross. Jordan couldn't get there and Thomas tries it and Lou Macari on the turn oh good one but Jordan's going to score his second goal it's 2-0 Joe Jordan and it's Wilkins and McQueen yes Shilton absolutely beaten all ends up by Gordon McQueen oh the big smile on that fella's face the smiles were back on the faces of everyone after two grey mid-table seasons, United were back in the medal positions. Liverpool at Anfield looked like a title decider. Of course, the big question is, can you really beat Liverpool for the championship this season? Well, possibly anybody else, but Liverpool would be exceptionally confident. Uh, we're levelling points at the moment. Unfortunately, they've got a game in hand, they've got a better goal average. It's up to them, really, to drop a point or two somewhere along the line. Um, Boxing Day is the one. Not many teams go to Liverpool and win. It had been fun, but defeat at Anfield meant defeat in the title race. United had won one trophy in the 70s, Liverpool had won 10. But United's turn was to come again.